uh, operational procedures. So this, uh, in this one lecture, we're going to cover the operational procedures, which is basically all the customer service topics that you're going to need to know for the exam, as well as instant response. So one thing I want to bring up up front is that IT is customer service. Okay? A lot of people think IT guys just sit in the basement, you know, play on the computer all day, and, and they do stuff. But honestly, if you want to be good at IT, you have to realize that you're going to deal with customers, and customers are a pain in the butt. Okay? Uh, so you got to understand how to deal with them because honestly, if you don't make the customer happy, they won't come back to you. If they don't come back, with, come back to you, you're going to be out of a job. right? So customer service is important. Um, this usually gets confused a lot in corporate environments. Um, I started out, when I started doing computers, doing a lot of house calls, doing a lot of small business stuff, and so I was a technician, but I was also a salesperson. They had to like me, otherwise they weren't going to hire me, right? In big corporate environments, you don't usually have that struggle because you're doing in-house support, and so we tend to get this philosophy a lot more where, oh, those stupid customers are always in my way. Um, I see this a lot with the guys I, run, I, I work with. When I ran the uh, center of, you know, 150 guys serving 10,000 people, they were always complaining about the customers and their, their crazy demands. It's like, well, if we didn't have the customers, we wouldn't need you. So let's keep that in mind. Although the customers can be annoying, they're there for us and we're there for them. So how do you interact with your customers? Um, you want to use proper language, right? We don't want to use jargon. So by the end of this two weeks, you guys are going to be all like genius computer people, right? And you're going to know all these awesome terms. And you could easily go in and go, oh, well, the reason why your computer is not working is because the ACPI is having issues and this, that, and the other thing. But the customer's not going to understand that, right? They want to know why their computer's broken in simple terms. Think about, like, if you go to the car mechanic. You may not be a car guy, right? If he starts telling you all this in-depth car stuff, you're, like, over your head. If he says, the car won't stop because your brakes are broken, you need new brakes, or they're worn out, then you understand what the problem is. So do the same thing for your customers. Um, be punctual. This is a huge one, right? If you show up on time, uh, you're going to be better than about 80% of the companies out there. So show up on time, do what you say you're going to do, uh, and do it with a smile. You're, you're going to do phenomenal in this business. Uh, listen to the customer, don't interrupt. Yeah, so a lot of times customers like to go on and on and on forever. Um, and at some point, you got to kind of redirect them back to what you want. Um, but I've seen some people that they'll come in and immediately just kind of kick the customer off the keyboard jump in and try to fix the problem before they even listen to what the problem really was. And so they might be solving a problem that doesn't exist. Uh, clarify the problem, right? You want to make sure you understand what the problem is. You always want to communicate with your customer. Um, there's never such a thing as too much communication from you to your customer. You want to set and meet their expectations. Um, and don't promise what you can't deliver. Uh, another thing I've seen time and time again that really bites technicians in the butt. Um, like I said, when I ran that, that uh, help desk organization, we served 10,000 customers. I would get a call two days later from some customer going, hey, how come I don't have that new 27-inch monitor? You know, Technician Joe told me he was going to bring me a new, a new monitor, and I don't have it on my desk. Well, Technician Joe wasn't authorized to replace that monitor for him, nor give that person a bigger monitor when they already had a small monitor or something like that. So don't promise something you can't deliver. If it's something you can't do, ask your supervisor if they can do it, right? Um, or take a note of it and take it back. But a lot of times people will do that. They'll promise something or, oh, I guarantee we'll have it back by 5 o'clock today. Three days later, the computer's still off their desk, right? So make sure you get, get them what you told them to get. Uh, maintain a positive attitude and tone of voice, right? Um, if you're having a bad day, customers can tell. Um, if you are thinking, man, that stupid customer, even if you're not saying it, they can tell, right? Um, and if you piss off the customer, guess what? They're probably going to call your boss, right? Um, or if you're in the business of serving customers individually and charging them by the hour, they're probably not going to call you again, right? You want them to be glad they called you. Um, don't argue with the customer. You're there to solve their problem, not cause more problems. I've seen, I've seen technicians who have argued with the customers and told the customers how stupid they were or how the problem that they have was their problem, right? Um, don't do that stuff. I know this is common sense, right? But it really does happen. Um, don't minimize their problem, right? Um, I've had a customer who called up because they couldn't get on Facebook. And this was in a work environment. Is Facebook mission essential to their job? No, right? Technician goes out there and starts telling the customer, well, you don't need Facebook anyway. Well, company policy is you're allowed to use Facebook at work, just as long as it wasn't like all day of your day. And so to them, it was a big deal because they couldn't get on Facebook. And we were in the Middle East, and that was their communication home to their wife and kids. And so the technician telling the person that, hey, your Facebook problem is not a big issue to me. I don't care. I'm not going to fix it, was a big issue. And again, that got escalated up to management, and that person got in trouble for it. Um, so again, to them, it's a big deal, right? You might think, oh, it's just one file that they're missing, but that file may have, I don't know, their next great movie script that they were writing, right? Or they might have lost some photos that were baby photos that they can never get back. 
the, the stuff on the computer is, you know, people's lives at this point. Um, avoid being judgmental. Don't judge the customer. Don't insult them or their actions. It's not the customer's fault, right, that the computer's broken, even though it is uh, half the time, right? Um, they deleted the file. It's still not their fault, right? The computer must have done it. We'll have to fix it anyway. Um, and avoid distractions. Uh, this is a, not such a big one where I work because we don't bring our cell phones in the building. But uh, this can be a problem at some places, right? Um, if, if your phone is on you, you're going to be distracted by it a lot of times because it's beeping in your pocket because somebody's Twittering you or Facebooking you or calling you. Um, this used to be a big one for me when I had my, my small business um, because my phone was the way we got new clients, right? And so if my phone was ringing, I was thinking, I have to answer this because this is my next job that's going to pay the next bill, right? Um, but again, by doing that, it's really rude to the customer who I'm with, right? They're paying you. In a lot of cases, you're either charging by the hour or by the job. We charge by the hour. So if I'm sitting there on a 10-minute phone call taking the next order, that's the time that this guy's paying for. That's not fair to him, right? So let it go to voicemail or have a secretary get it or something like that. Uh, avoid distractions. You don't need your cell phone unless it's part of that particular mission or that particular job. So how should you treat customer's property? Um, this one's pretty simple and self-explanatory as well, right? Um, let's say you're troubleshooting somebody's iPhone. Should you call your great-grandma in Nigeria? Probably not, right? That wouldn't be very right. Um, don't use their, their equipment for personal use. Don't look through their devices and, or their device storage unless it's required to do your job, right? Don't go, you know, I wonder what they have in their photos file. I wonder what kind of music they got in their iTunes, right? It's none of your business, right? Unless, of course, it's what you're told to do. Again, I told you guys a story earlier. You may not like what you find, right? So don't start looking through their photos. You may find stuff that doesn't agree with your morals or values. Um, don't test their printer by printing out personal documents. But when you set up a printer, you do need to test it, right? Go ahead and print a single page to make sure it prints, right? There's a Windows test program, or you can go to an internet website and just print off a, print off a, a quick little short thing. Um, but don't go and print you know, a novel, because you don't want to waste their toner, waste their printer, waste their supplies. Uh, if you change their monitor resolution, put it back. You guys might be thinking, what is he talking about? So when you talk about monitor resolution, you're talking about how much will fit on a single size screen. You can squeeze it down into very tiny size and fit more on a screen, or blow it up and make it very big and fit less on a screen. If you're working on one of the older people's monitors at work, um, sometimes they have very low resolution, meaning they have really big icons, and it's really stretched out. And it makes your job as a technician really hard because you can't fit a lot on the screen. If you need to change it to do your job, that's fine. Go ahead and change it to a higher resolution. Do your job, but when you're done, put it back to the way they had it. Because otherwise, when she comes into work the next day and she can't see because the icons are, you know, a quarter of an inch and she's used to them being two inches, um, she's going to be calling you for problems again, right? So whatever you change, make sure you change it back. Um, and then again, make your customers happy that they called you. You want to be their hero. You don't want to be the guy they're complaining about in the break room. Um, if you respect their stuff, they'll respect you and they'll be happy they called you. Instant response and documentation. So what do you do when there's a problem? Okay. Um, so if you're the first responder, as a help desk technician, you often are, right? I call you up because I'm a customer and I'm going, hey, uh, every time I try to go to Facebook.com, it brings me to this other website. Well, that's kind of weird, right? I type in Facebook.com, but it's taking me to, I don't know, Twitter, right? Um, I call up the help desk and they dispatch you. You start looking through the computer and you have to identify what happened. So you're going to ask me questions. You're going to write a report on what happened. Usually in a company, there's a ticketing system that'll do that. And you're going to preserve the, the scene for follow-up responders. So if it's just a troubleshooting issue, you'll just fix the problem, right? But what if you start going through and you're like, oh, I think this guy got a virus. Now we have an incident that we have to deal with with that computer. So you're going to have to preserve the scene. You'll call your supervisor. They'll get the security team out there to deal with it. Um, one of the things you need to do is document what you're seeing, right? So what I always like is the standard kind of military format. Date, time, and action you're, you're seeing, right? So it's, you know, February 7th, uh, it's, you know, 9.33 a.m. I arrived at the computer and I saw that when I typed in Facebook, it took me to this website, right? So write down your date, time, and action. Um, document anything that's happening, right? So you can go and look at any processes you did, any procedures. If the customer was the issue, they had clicked on some link that downloaded a virus, you gave them training, whatever it happens to be. Um, chain of custody. So when you hear chain of custody, you should start thinking like law and order TV shows, right? It's like that legal thing. So your paper trail of the evidence. So that date time that you're writing down, all those notes may be turned over later. Let's say you were there to fix somebody's computer and you found child porn on the computer, right? 
um, this is where your notes are going to become very important, right? You arrived at this time, you did this, this is what you saw, this is what happened. When the FBI or the police come to investigate, they're going to ask you all those questions. You're going to need to have some answers for them. Um, and if you're the first responder, you may get called in later on for litigation if needed. Um, same thing happens if the company had a breach or had a hack incident. Um, your notes are going to become important for that. So the employee calls you up. They complain that their workstation is running slowly. They call you as the technician. You arrive as the field service tech. When you arrive, you found that the machine had torrent software on there downloading stuff, and they've been downloading music and movies illegally. If we're doing incident response and documentation, what should we do? Well, we should make a note of what time we got there. We should note what we saw on the computer screen, right? Uh, we saw that they were using BitTorrent, that they were downloading, um, I don't know, the new Star Wars movie. Um, you know, anything that you see that could be helpful, and then you're going to elevate it up through your, your chain of command at your, at your office. Um, that may be going to your supervisor, right? And then they would put it in through the security system. Uh, if it's something illegal, uh, we're going to end up making sure that we're going to call our supervisor down to us. We'll stay at the computer, make sure that they can, you know, not touch it because it could become evidence later if needed. Uh, in this case, we're probably not going to call the cops over music and movies, but if it was child porn, you would, right? So here's a, an example question. So after we make repairs to a user system, which of the following actions should we take? Should we close the case and wait for the customer to call us again in the future? Should we leave the case open in the event that something else will happen? Should we contact the customer a few days later to determine the state of the repairs? Or should we wait to update service records until the repair is confirmed? What do you guys think? What makes sense from a common sense perspective? What do you think you want to do? Probably C, right? You want to call the customer a few days later and make sure that the repairs are done properly, right? I fixed your computer. Hey, Nick, is it working? Great. Now, that's a common sense approach and doing it from a professionalism. I'll tell you a side benefit of this. 90% of the business that I got when I had my computer repair service was based off referrals. So I would call up Nick and go, hey, Nick, you know, it's been a couple days. I just wanted to make sure that your computer is working great. And he's like, oh, that's awesome. And by the way, my buddy over here, Chuck, has a computer problem too. Can you go over to his house and help him out? I got so much business by doing follow-up calls like that that A is good business just to call them, but B, it gave me a lot more business and a lot more money, right? And so it's a good thing to do uh, both from a professionalism standpoint and from a business standpoint. It's getting referrals and getting that continual um, support going on. 